Hey guys, Patrick from Specifics Prep here with your bi-weekly SAT lesson. Uh, today we're going to be covering a very popular type of math question on the SAT. Uh, from our studies, we've noticed that there are about seven of these per test, and depending on how you were doing uh, on these already, uh, that could be as much as a 70 point improvement on your math test just by mastering this one concept. Uh, we call these questions more unknowns than equations. That is, they toss a lot of variables at you. It doesn't seem like a traditional simultaneous equations approach is going to work, uh, so you need to use some sort of other uh, method for solving the question. That's what we're going to show you today. The questions that we're going to be using today uh, are inspired by questions in this book. Uh, they're very close to actual questions in this book, but they're not actually the questions because I don't want to get sued. Uh, but they are close enough that you'll know exactly how to solve the questions that are in this book. So, without further ado, let's get started. Okay, so the first thing we're going to do is a number 14, and that's uh, sort of medium difficulty. Now, if you look at this question, it says y equals x cubed for any positive integer x, uh, and if uh, z equals y squared plus y, what is z in terms of x? Uh, so, ostensibly, we have three unknowns in this case. We have an x, we have a y, and we have a z, right? And if you look at the question, we only have two uh, equations. So uh, here's a situation in which we have more unknowns than equations. I'm going to show you two different ways of solving this question. Uh, the first is a trick. Uh, it's something that a lot of the bigger test preparation companies will try to really impress you with the first day. They say, this is our cool technique, this is why you should be grateful you spent thousands of dollars with our program. I'm going to sort of just give it to you for free uh, because I think that everyone should know this trick. Uh, so what you do is you look at the equations they give you. In this case, y equals x cubed, and then z equals y squared plus y, and you say, you know what? I don't want to work with variables, I want to work with numbers. I like numbers. Numbers are easier than letters when I'm dealing with math. So the first thing you're going to do is you're going to figure out which one's the easiest one to put your own number in for. Uh, in this case, I think it's going to be x because it's cubed, and it's a lot easier to cube a number than taking the cube root of something else later on. Uh, so I'm going to say, well, let me make x equal 2, just for fun. Uh, it's a nice easy number, it's easy to cube. Uh, so if x equals 2, then we have... 2 cubed equals 8. Now we have the value of y is 8. And that's pretty straightforward. Uh, and again, we have now that we have y, we can find z pretty quickly. If y equals 8, and z is going to equal 8 squared plus 8, 64 plus 8, and that is, of course, 72. And now I have all three values, uh, x, y, and z. And now if we look at the question, it's asking for what is z. Uh, in this case, we have the answer. We know that z is 72. Uh, and that's great news. We're, we're, we're almost finished with the question. Uh, unfortunately, none of the answer choices uh, say uh, 72, right? They all have x's in them. Uh, the good news is we know that x equals 2. <laughs> so we go to the answer choices and we say, okay, x squared plus x, that is 2 squared plus 2. That's 4 plus 2, and that is 6. And 6 does not match what we said uh, z is going to equal, so that is out. I'm going to keep working down the list the same manner. Uh, 2 cubed is 8, that's no good. And we have 2 cubed plus 2, and that's 10, that's no good. Uh, 2 to the 5th, and obviously you can use your calculator if the exponents start getting a little scary for you. Um, and that is 2 to the 5th is what, 32. Uh, plus 8 is 40, getting closer but still not right. At this point you might be tempted to just circle E because you have uh, eliminated A through D, but we're actually going to just solve for E as well to make sure that we didn't make any mistakes. Okay, so 2 to the 6th plus 2 cubed, 2 to the 6th is 64, plus 8 is, what do you know? 72. Ding, ding, ding. It matches up and that is the answer. So that's the first way we're going to um, solve a question like this. We're going to use this technique in which we use our own numbers instead of sticking with the variables. Uh, as you can see, it's a little more work. Uh, it takes a little more time to solve the question than the arithmetic method. Uh, I'm sorry, the algebraic method. But um, you get the right answer and you earn 10 points. So let's take a look at another way to solve this question. Okay, so now we're going to solve it the the real way, the sort of quote-unquote uh, official way, and that is we're going to take advantage of algebra uh, to solve this question. It will 
get you the answer faster, but it's a little less intuitive. Uh, but we're going to uh, go through that method now. Uh, so again, the first thing you want to do is recognize that it's a number 14, and 14s are going to be uh, slightly challenging. So you want to, again, take, get track of your uh, variables. In this case, we know that y equals x cubed, and then we know that z equals y squared plus y. And we're going to let the question sort of guide our approach here. Um, we see that the question is asking for z. Uh, and again, we have three unknowns. We have x, y, and z, and we need to find z. Uh, now, it's not asking for the actual numerical value of z, right? It's asking for it in terms of x. So if they're asking for z, and you need to express it in x, which variable do you think you're going to need to get rid of? The y, right? So we're going to get rid of the y, and the way you do that is simple substitution, right? So we have a y in this equation. We know that y equals x cubed. And we have a y in this equation. We know that y is uh, squared here, and then we have this y here. What we're going to do is a simple substitution. Wherever we see the y here, we're going to replace it with what we know uh, y to equal, and that is x cubed. That is, we're going to put x cubed in for y here, and we're going to put x cubed in for y here. And it's a simple substitution. So let's see what that looks like. We have z equals uh, x cubed squared. Remember, it's y squared, right? And y equals x cubed, so it's x cubed squared. And then we replace the y simply with x cubed. Okay? So that doesn't match our answer choices yet, but it's pretty darn close. Uh, we're going to follow the rules of exponents. We know that if we raise a power to a power, we multiply the exponents. So we get x to the sixth plus x to the third. And guess what? We now have z in terms of x. Okay, and then we can just go straight to the answer choices. We see that that is answer choice E, which we already knew is the correct answer from the previous example. Um, so, sorry for the lack of suspense there. But, uh, as you can see, this is substantially less work, uh, but it's harder mathematically. We're, we're sticking with variables, and it's uh, staying a little more conceptual as opposed to uh, numerical. Uh, so that is a uh, more straightforward way of solving this question. Let's look at a few simple, similar questions. So here we have a number 18, and as you can see, there are no answer choices. So um, this is 18 out of 18. This is about as hard as the questions get on the SAT. Uh, and I'll read this one for you. It says, the figure above shows an arrangement of 10 squares, each with a side of length s inches. Uh, the perimeter of the figure is x inches, and the area of the figure is y square inches. If x equals y, what is the value of s? So again, we have three unknowns here. We have our side, which is s. We have our perimeter, which is x. And we have our area, which is y. So again, three things that we don't know. And as you can see in the question, only one um, equation that they're giving you, that x equals y. So the first thing we're going to do is take a look at our figure. It's saying that the perimeter, that is this darkened sort of edge, is equal to x. All right? So I know that x is going to equal the perimeter. Uh, hopefully I can do something with that. I'm going to, I'm going to put that over here somewhere. Um, and then they say that the area of the figure is equal to y. So I'm going to put that here. Uh, and in this case, they're not asking for it in terms of another uh, value. They're asking for the actual numerical value, which means that I'm going to need three equations because I have three unknowns. So I already have one equation, I have x equals y, and I need two more. All right? So the first thing I'm going to say is, okay, if the perimeter is x, and I know that the side of each one of these squares is s, I could set something up. If I keep going around here, I know that all these sides are s, and guess what? I have a new way of expressing the perimeter of this shape. And there's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, blah, 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 16 sides, right? So I know that the perimeter of this thing is also 16s. Voila, an equation. Um, and then I could do the same thing with area, right? I know that the area of one of these sides, uh, squares rather, is s times s, or s squared, not s, not 2s, right? Uh, so s squared, and there are 10 of them. The question tells us there's 10 of them. Uh, so I know that the area of this figure is 10 s squared. That's cool. Uh, oh, and we have one more equation, didn't we? x equals y. Cool. Alright, so let's take a look. If we know that x equals y, x equals this, uh, y equals that, um, guess what? This equals that. 
so we have 16s equals 10s squared. Uh, and here we can just start solving algebraically, right? Divide both sides by s. S will drop out on this side. The square drops out on this side. I have 16 equals 10s. Divide both sides by 10. And guess what? S equals 1.6. 16 over 10. Uh, or uh, that reduced, I guess, would be 8 over 5. Uh, so that's it. That's the answer. Uh, so let's do a quick review. Uh, when they give you uh, multiple unknowns and they're asking for the actual value of one of them, chances are you're going to have to um, solve algebraically, especially if there are no answer choices to help you out. You can't use that trick that we learned on the previous question. Uh, in this case, we just set up a few equations given the dimensions of this uh, figure and solved algebraically. Not too bad for number 18. Let's take a look at one more. One last question we're going to look at today. Uh, this one is a number 16 out of 16, so it's about as hard as the questions get on the SAT. And you'll notice that it's a function question, which we haven't uh, talked about yet today. So uh, let me read this over, and then we'll talk about it for a bit. It says there was a 100-day period when the number of ants in a certain colony could be modeled by the function p above. And the function c is a constant, and p of n represents the ant population on day number n, for 0 is less than or equal to n is less than or equal to 99. Uh, on what number day was the number of ants in the hive the same as it was on day number 10? Okay, now if we look at this function, they give us this p of n equals n squared over 2 minus 20n plus c. There are three unknowns, right? We have this uh, n, we have p of n, and we have... C. So we have the input, we have the output, and we have a constant. So three unknowns, right? Now what they're doing at the bottom here, they say, um, what number of day was the number of ants in the hive the same as it was on day number 10? Is they're giving us an input, right? They're telling us put in day number 10. That is n equals 10. So that's the first thing we're going to do. We're going to set n equal to 10 and see what happens. Okay. Uh, so instead of doing p of n, we're going to do p of 10, right? Um, and that's going to be 10 squared over 2 minus 20 times 10 plus c. It kind of stinks that that c is still there, but we're going to write it out for now, okay? And we're going to simplify. Uh, 10 squared is 100 divided by 2 is 50. 20 times 10. Don't need a calculator for that. Uh, see, when we get simplify a little bit further, we get negative 150 plus c. And if you want to make it look a little nicer, you could say C minus 150. And that's about as much as we could do on this side. So, we know that on day 10 there were C minus 150, um, C minus 150 uh, ants in this colony. And that kind of sucks, because we don't know what C is. And at this point, you might think, I think we're doing something wrong. But we're going to keep going with this. We're going to write it out just to see what happens. Uh, because we know that the population at day 10 was C minus 150. Uh, so they want to know what day uh, was the population the same as that day. So if we find another day that has a population of C minus 150, we're done. All right, so the way we're going to do that is we're going to set the function equal to what we found for 10. All right, so we're going to say, I'm going to set this entire function equal to C minus 150. In this case, I'm setting the, the entire function here is, again, n squared over 2 minus 20n plus c. Uh, now, if you are looking for an opportunity to simplify, you'll notice something great. The positive c on this side, positive c on this side, and nowhere else, uh, those can go away. And that is great news, because we are now down to one unknown, and that makes me happy. Okay, uh, So it's negative 150 on this side, a squared term on this side. It looks like I'm going to factor, so I'm going to have to set this equal to zero. plus 150, right? And I don't like that 2 there, this 2 in the denominator, so I'm going to multiply the entire thing uh, by 2 just to make my life easier. Uh, and obviously you have to multiply both sides by 2. Good news is 0 doesn't care about 2. And we get n squared minus 40n plus 300. Remember, you have to multiply everything uh, by the 2. Okay. So it looks like we're out of the factor here. Let's set up our binomials. Now remember, when you're factoring, uh, you need 
numbers here that multiply to give us this term. So that's pretty straightforward. n squared is simply n times n. Uh, now these get a little trickier, right? We need a number, uh, a pair of numbers that multiply to give us positive 300 and add to give us negative 40. So if they multiply to give us a positive number and add to give us a negative number, we're going to need two negative numbers. So in this case, think of two negative numbers that multiply to give you 300. Well, the most obvious pair is probably 30 and 10. So let's see if that works. Negative 30, negative 10 multiply to give us 300. Oh my god, they add to negative 40. That was easy. Uh, ATS does not care about giving you difficult um, uh, factoring uh, questions. Uh, if you get to this step, it shouldn't be difficult because there's no way they're going to ever require you to use the quadratic formula or anything like that. So uh, f factoring on the SAT is generally very straightforward. Uh, okay, now we solve for n. You know that n equals 10, which is really encouraging because that's the number we we're already working with, and then 30. So we can see that 30 uh, is going to have the same population as uh, day 10. So day 30 and day 10 have the same populations, and we're done. The answer is 30. Uh, now, at this point, you could say, but we never found C. And that's true. We never found C, but the question wasn't asking for C. If you remember, I was asking for um, the second day that population equals what it equaled on day number 10. So that's good news. All right, so uh, in this case, we got rid of the variables uh, one at a time. We, we dealt with uh, the three unknowns sequentially. Uh, it's just sort of following the rules of uh, functions. And we'll do a little review at the end. Well, that wasn't so bad. So let's review. So the first question that we saw looked like a fairly straightforward algebra question, but it had one important difference. It wasn't asking for the numerical value of a particular variable. It was asking for one variable in terms of another. Okay? And the first way we solved that was the trick, right? Using our own numbers. And again, that's the kind of trick that the big guys, uh, Princeton Review, Kaplan, Revolution Prep, uh, will try to really dazzle you with. And it's, it's really a straightforward kind of trick. So I wanted to show that to you. And that's going to make your life really easy, especially if you're scared of uh, higher order algebraic manipulation, exponents, roots, whatever. So remember that one. Uh, some good ways to know that it's okay to make up your own numbers are you're going to see the phrase in terms of uh, in the question, and you're going to see variables in the answer choices. That is, the answer choices are going to be algebraic expressions. So if you see either of those two cues, chances are you can use this approach. Uh, so remember that. Uh, now we did that same question a second way, and we did it algebraically, and that was basically figure out what they're asking for, that is, in this case they asked for z, and they asked for it in terms of x. Uh, so we had to get rid of the one in the middle, that y, and that's going to guide your algebraic approach if you decide to handle those questions algebraically. Now, the second type of question we saw was that geometry one with a crazy square shape, uh, and in that one we had to actually create multiple equations so that we had the same number of equations as unknowns. Uh, and that's a really important thing to remember on questions uh, that don't have answer choices, that is, they are, have to ask for a numerical value, uh, or answer choices that have just numbers. They're asking for a specific value of one variable. Uh, in that case, you're going to have to write your own equations and solve algebraically. And then the third type we saw was that function question, in which it didn't matter if we couldn't find them all, because they eventually started to drop out of the function. And that is, we want to uh, eliminate one variable at a time. So remember those three tricks. Use your own numbers, write more equations, or get rid of variables one at a time, and tackling this type of a question, this more unknowns than equations, is not going to be terribly difficult anymore, and your score is going to shoot right up. Hope you tune in next time. Thanks.